and it's just me it's just me folks i'm afraid today i've had we've had a few technical problems um jane's got a croaky throat i've had a bit of a cold too so it's gonna be just me saying hello to you today and doing a uh, Sat our saturday night live um tonight with craig and jane but just the craig bit of of the craig and jane team today so nice to see you all guys um i'll do my hellos to you in a moment um i have some questions ready because um i wasn't quite sure what to talk about for you tonight um i looked at some of the patrons um I looked at some of the patrons messages for this and some of you are asking about palmistry so i, I might uh, just tell you a few basic things about palmistry if you're interested in that possibly or whatever questions you want to ask so let's have a say hello to some of you guys me without dominico either because they're off with a bit of flu as well so let's see who's who's on board here Tressa talbot hi from canada good to see you and we got cindy from missouri Good to see you, Cindy. Nice of you to join us here today. I wonder if we've got anyone from Rhode Island. Oh, yes, we have <laughs> from Rhode Island. Of course, I, I'm doing all the controls today as well for you. So we'll just say a few hellos from um, folks. Here. Oh, so you've got a few interesting questions coming up already. So it's going to be a bit different today because I'm obviously going to have to be referring to my screen um, to see what you've got to ask. So questions going to be very useful for me today, which we will answer uh i saw we've got some people in from quebec already and from uh, canada hi chris chris ellie hi from montreal quebec nice to see you there and chicago we've got a lot of people here today i see hi kit you've been on a lot of times seeing you on the patrons of course um a lot coming in from america from canada I see you've got some interesting stuff going over there in canada too with all your lorry drivers and everything uh protesting and I see we have from New York here. Hi, Cy Ram Mary. Um, snowy, stormy, windy day. In fact, I believe you're going to you're due for some extremely bad weather uh, there in America soon, they say, um, which is going to be a, a bit tough. It's not too bad here in the UK. Good morning, Craig and Jane, who can't be with us today if you're just joining us. Um, she's had a bit of a cold, too, so um, she won't be on nil. But nice to see you all. Uh, hello from Hi Sweethearts. <laughs> I, uh, you had your messages ready, you see, didn't you? I can see that. Uh, and we got, of course, we got uh, Agility Bits packed down there in Cornwall and right on the other side of the world over in Boston. So it's nice to see you all. It's good always to say a few hellos like this right at the beginning um so that you know we just sort of give us a bit of time for you to come on live but i see there's quite a lot of you on already actually so it's nice to see i won't say everybody's nice but i just click a few things as i'm talking to you here uh and you'll see your names come up hopefully um jane will be back soon hopefully next week um uh sunny germany again you've got this, this stormy germany okie doke so we've got bad weather both sides of the world today and um yeah so you know whatever questions you want with me today guys um i might start off just talking a little bit about palmistry i thought because it's one that we haven't um spoken about you a bit better soon it won't be long i've had a croaky voice you saw on some of those earlier um, ones i did this this week they i was um source <laughs> hi <laughs> um yeah so um uh it's uh it, it don't take us long uh, jane and i are pretty resilient to things when we get sick hello so just saying hello to loads of you i'm going because dominico's not here i'm gonna click on everybody you're all gonna be able to say your hellos but i won't call out your names each time right okay and oh even some swansea there oh and in paris that's an awesome uh, i'm here hey who <laughs> all right right folks so um where are we going to start tonight um let's have your questions i've got loads and um, take it easy with the number of comments you put on particularly those spammers that like to come on and make funny comments that's going to make it harder for me tonight for you um and i'll look out for your questions but i'll start talking first of all because as you know we've got patrons on the website and on the um the whole setup we have who are paying for all the um uh, a lot of the support to help us with our work, uh, both with the um, studio 
and also with our charitable work. And we've done some recent charitable work this week, again in India, actually. Um, some children are being fed this week. Um, in fact, 93 um, people are being fed, not children. Actually, these are older people and some cows are being given away. Um, but that's come out of our own personal money this time. But we've also we do a lot of work with the chat with uh, with our work with the being patrons and so forth doing um, and it helps support us do this um, work helps uh, as well our time helps us our expenses and helps us get the studio together so those of you that become patrons I always take your questions much more seriously than everyone else's because you pay the bills he who pays the piper um, and some of you when I put it up on the patron section said what would we like to ask about and one of the questions was about palmistry it was basically a very simple question and I thought well, it might be a good idea to sort of um, um, uh to be a good starting point just to talk about it they ask what's the difference between the left hand and the right hand you know why do we have different um markings on the two hands i mean mine are pretty much similar if you look at my my palms there we can get good focuses on this yeah because we're going to need to do that if i'm going to do this yeah so you know so that hand and that hand very similar i've got very similar joining lines here and joining lines here on the palm now, um, so what, depending whether we're left handed or right handed, if we're right handed, um, well, if we're, if we're right handed, then it's our left hand tells us what we inherit from life, as it were. And our right hand is what we do about it, as it were. So this is our destiny hand and this is our action hand. So one gives the will and one gives the karma, as it were. <coughs> and Chinese and Indian systems have slightly different ideas to this so these are very basic simple summaries so when we get that when someone asks me that question what's the difference well that's what we get the left and that's what we do about it and if it's marked on the palm then you know, perhaps our destiny's already set but i've noticed through my hands through life that um the lines have actually changed they change through life as as i've gone through life and um and it's very interesting to think how certain major events in my life seem to just slightly change the markings on the palm. Not all the deep lines. The deep lines pretty much stay much as they were. But often some of the finer lines have changed through my life. So um, shall I carry on with this? You can't think this is quite an interesting topic because I'm going to get you all looking at your palms now and saying, what's all this about? What's that one about? So if you're interested in palmistry, let's let's do a little talk on that. And I'll take some more of your questions in a minute. And you can ask me any questions at this point about anything to do with palmistry. So <coughs> depending on what system you use, there's eight different divisions of the shapes of the hands. Now, without going in, I won't go into the detail of that much. But basically, the more square your hand is, um, the more. Um, I see Domenico's on doing something here with me. So we've got some help in the background. The more square your hand is, right, the more uh, down to earth you are, basically, the more practical you are. And the longer the hand, really, and this is just a basic summary, the more artistic, the more philosophical you become. Right. So that's just and there's eight divisions, but, but into different elements and things like that. But just for a beginner, if you're interested, um, if we look at the palm, We've got the lines, but the most more important than the lines, actually, are the mounts, all these bits. You know, you notice. So if you say for a, we take this one, right, this mount here. Right. That is the Mount of Venus. That's all about your love and things like that. Right. All that's your love area. So I've got a strong, strong, straight line there. You see, can you can see it, I think, with the light. All right. That's a loyalty line. That means I'm very loyal to people. Um, when it comes to matters of love. So if you've got that same little line there, that on that Mount of Venus would show um, a loyal person. But also often on this palm, and if I crunch it a bit, but you can, often on this one, you'll find people have lots of little fine lines, lots of tiny little lines on there as well. And that's kind of all your worries. So if you've got that, I can see all now, we're looking at your palms all around the world. <laughs> that's all your worries. That's all your cares, you know. But if you've got a well-developed mount here, if your mount is fleshy and it's reasonably reddish, perhaps not too pale, that will show that you've got compassion and you've got love in your life. All this area here is a Mars area. So this is where your health, where your sporty type things are. And then also you have the plane of Mars down the middle. But this is all like your, your energy and things like that. And then we have this is the finger of Jupiter. So here, this is the Jupiter area. All this area, if that's all developed well, you know, you get lumps here, you get mounts. They're called the mounts. If that's all well developed, 
you'll be um, very positive person, very business minded type of person, perhaps very um, lucky is that although a lot of the markings and things we find on there are things about luck like triangles are good things to have on that mount because it means uh, it can mean good luck good fortune in business and sometimes if you have a little fine line that runs up from here which is the headline up into that mount it can show you're going to be famous and this mount is the is the saturn mount this saturn is a planet it's easy really it's just the planets but the saturn is a planet is a much more um heavier planet really it's the it's the planet associated often with religion and philosophy as well and achievements so even the negative markings on there can show for example a um often you'll get um little squares you know and they can mean to you things such as um overcoming obstacles which saturn is all about a square on that mount can sometimes be positive this is the sun area this is all the area of all to do with your uh, artistic abilities so if you look, if you've got well-developed mounts there and the markings on there, all associate with your artistic abilities. And here on the little finger, this all, all this area is Mercury, which is all your communications. And often they have the lines that run round here and to the side are often taken as the marriage lines. So the number of lines often on the side of the hand there will indicate the number of times you get married. So there's a few thoughts. And then, of course, just to, just to get this today started, we, we can go on all sorts of other subjects in a minute. But these are just just something to get to get you thinking if you've never encountered palmistry before. And I mean, there's tons of stuff on the Web about it now that's well worth looking at. But you also got your lines, you see. We mentioned I mentioned that little loyalty line there. But if I can get my hand right here. So there we go. Down. That one goes down here and follows the Mount of Venus. Remember, that's the Venus Mount there. This one that runs all down here is your lifeline. Oh, mine goes right the way down to what we call the bracelets here, which suggests that I'd have a long life. But usually we don't if it stops short, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have a short life. But we look at that line to see what type of a life a person might have. Sometimes you get a second line that runs next to it. Some people get a doubling of that lifeline, which means a, a life of tremendous energy. Sometimes little fine lines coming up from it can indicate major travels in life, particularly any lines that jump into this area. Because this is the Mount of the Moon over here in the imagination, but also travel. So lines that go into towards that area, often we'll look at a palm to say that is all about our travel area. And any um, breaks in the line we have to look at carefully because that can sometimes show an illness. You also have another line that runs up through the middle of the palm, which is the fate line, which goes, goes up here, which tells you all about your working life. And depending how deep that is, and not everybody always has a strong line there. That can also, that can indicate the type of career you might have. We look at that for and how long you might do the career if it stops, say, on what we call here the on the heart line. If it stops on the heart line, for example, it might mean your career is stopped because you fell in love with someone or perhaps something to do with emotional things stopped your your career. And if it goes right up and onto the finger itself, which you sometimes see on someone's hand and even goes onto the finger, it means you put too much emphasis on work and should be con concentrating more on. So perhaps on your love life and your spiritual things, right? And similarly, just to conclude it, to give you the last little bits on this idea, we also have what we call the heart line here. This is another one people get very interested in. This is the line of obviously all the emotions um, and all of the um, uh, life's uh, romantic side. If it's all, if it's broken a lot or if it's twisted a lot, if it's chained, that can often show uh, troubles in, in one's love life. And depending on the position of it, of course, early on, there might be more chains. Later on, it might become less, more deep and more clear. And then we also got the headline. This is this line that joins. In my case, the headline there joins the lifeline. So if the two join like that, and many people have the two joining of the lines, you see this, that way that line there and that line there join together, make a sort of a, you see the shape when I go like that. If they're joined together, it means you're kind of a bit more in control of your life. You're less impetuous. You know, you'll do you won't just jump in. You'll think about things before you before you act. So that's what they kind of mean when we get that. And if if your line on your head, my head, sometimes the headliner goes straight across the palm, you know, bang right away across. Sometimes it curves down like this. And in my case, it curves down into this area of the moon, which shows what I'm very interested in things like the imagination, the app, the occult things like that, you know. So if, if your headline is heading down towards that area, I expect a lot of you would have that here because you're very, I expect, interested in occult things because you're watching this type of channel, you know. 
and and there's so many other ones and that's just the surface you know um, and the indian astrologers are fantastic they have they have a whole palmistry just for the thumb you know just for the dots on the thumb and what they mean but that is just a very very simple um introduction i thought to get us started tonight on the palm uh, and what it means and um, maybe you found that interesting so I see Domenico's come online now to help me there. Hi, da hi, Dom. Nice to see you. He's come on remotely. Hello. <laughs> so we can see Domenico today as well. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> sorry if you're not. This was all cobbled but... together in the last minute. Yeah, sorry. Uh, I got COVID. Uh, we just discovered it in the family. So... Oh, there's an interesting one. I'm going to hit that one, Domenico. That's oh, an interesting one. question. That one. I want to answer that question, actually, because that's an interesting thing. Because also associated with this whole business about the palm, um, <coughs> not numerology can often get linked into this. As well as astrology, numerology is interesting. And that whole business of the number nine is a really fascinating thing. Because there's a number in, in India, not, nine in your numerology is usually shows that you're on the last incarnation. But 108 is the most fascinating number, I think, in, in all these things. They, they often ask, why is it sacred in India? And one of the reasons is, if you take the diameter of the moon and you divide it into uh, the orbit of the... Can you... <laughs> I've lost the minute sound. I think we got my sound still. Yeah. But if you take... You basically get 108. It's 108 divisions. They, the divisions of these of the of the way the planets go around the sun gives us this incredible magic number. And um, it, when we look into these strange mathematics, I mean, Newton was really fascinated by the whole idea of mathematics. He spent the last parts of his years studying things like um, uh, ma uh, numerology and uh, all the weird sequences of numbers, you know, and. And it, it, it's the, this whole system of numbers is, is just so fascinating. But I've kind of gone off on a bit of a uh, thread. And yeah, number 23 is another one of those weird numbers that keeps coming up in mysticism a lot um, in weird coincidences. We live at a number 23. And John Lennon believed in it as well. You online, Domenico? You there? No, he's got no sound. Hopefully you can all hear sound. Hello, Dom. Hello, Dom. Hello, Domenico. Hi, Domenico. <laughs> well, hopefully, guys, you can hear us all right. Yeah, now, now Newton, actually, he was a really weird sort of guy in the end. He got very, you know, I, I had an argument with um, Richard Dawkins off, off camera when I did that show with him. And he go, now, well, all this nonsense, all you people get involved in and things. I said, well, a lot of people were very interested in it. You know, Einstein was very interested in these things. Um, and so was Newton. He spent the whole last part of his life dedicated entirely to studying numerology, you know, and the weird sequences of numbers and what they mean magically, you know. Uh, and of course, all the, you know, all the great um, uh, many of the many of the early scientists came from the natural philosophers of Greece and also from out of astrology. Let's see if you can hear me now. Ciao, Domenico. Ciao. Oh. <laughs> can you hear me now? You speak to him in Italian, you can hear him. Yeah. <laughs> I hope, no, I My mic up. I don't seems not to work properly. Yeah. So you got me and Domenico at your, 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 your beck and call today as well. I got a question about the palmistry because you were showing it and I was looking at my, which one is it, left or right? I was looking at the right hand there, yeah. Because they're yeah, similar yeah. to mine. Yeah. This one is the left. Hang on, let's have a look. Okay, you got a very similar palm to mine, you see. Look at your, yeah. you've got a very developed mount of Venus, you know. You've got a very developed um, lunar mount on the opposite side to the thumb there. That's huge imagination, which I know you're very much, and all your mounts are well developed. You've got um, a very developed uh, Jupiter mount too, so you're going to make a lot of money, Domenico. Yeah, I and... said that my my um, yearly yearly resolution for 2022 is to become a millionaire. So oh, I think you could do it the way you go on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely uh, the, do the promotion it. Yeah. is a beginning. 
Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> I see a lot of people here like the idea of numerology too. I mean, we'll have to do a special, um, maybe just a special evening on it sometime. You were telling me about numerology and your name and birth date. Why aren't you talking about it? Uh, yeah, it's quite easy to work out your um, life path. You just take your basically take your date of birth. So, um, mine's um, sorry, I say mine's the twenty fourth. So twenty four. You write so you write down the number twenty four. Right, write it down, guys. Oh, really, you try. January, write down your birthday. 1954, right? So then I add the 20, I add those numbers together. 24, 1. So you add them all together. 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus 1 is 7. Plus another one is 8. Plus 9, um, 17. Uh, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. All right, when I add them all up together. So I get number 26. Then I add the 2 and the 6, and it gives me an 8, which means my numerological number is a number eight for life path and a number eight for example is somebody that would be um usually quite successful in life funny um, i've done mine it's a now. Money number really yeah and did you try that yours up have you yes it came out eight oh, so you're the same so we're very similar and the, the length of my name domenico that's eight letters okay yeah yeah yeah. And then, of course, depending on what system we use, there's different types of systems you can use for working out the numbers to the letters. The, each letter of your name can be given a, a numeral, a, a number, and then we add them together and so on until we get other numbers. So we can take, for example, all the vowels in your name and add them up to get some some diagnosis. We can take all the uh, uh, consonants in your name to give another suggestion and so we get the thing about what what type of personality you are um what type of things you're going to do and then we look at your astrology and put the two things together and um and, and some numbers like 22 and 11 have very special significance but without going into great detail on this but it's basically get your life path number very easy and you can go and look it up on the web once you've got your number numerology value for whatever it is five or eight we've got something on the website haven't we i think coming up to, uh, but for all that for people coming up soon yeah numerology is actually something that i've been interested in the past because numbers it the universe is numbers so it yeah. interests me everything that has to do with numbers somebody says what is a tree what is a what a tree a tree, a tree, number three. It has plant leaves on it. Just a, no, just a number three. Oh, three, yes, Italians. Oh, yes. sorry. Oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, e each of the numbers have different sort of meanings for each person. Like a number one person is like an innovation type of person, and uh, and so on. They all have different different meanings to to each of the numbers. Um, I see your keyboard player. They're saying they they they, they, don't, they don't have to look at us on here to tell us looking at <laughs> Domenico is very good with music he's fantastic I, I can I've oh, got a no. panel here too so I can <laughs> I can pick up your questions too see guys <laughs> yeah I can choose if anybody says anything bad about Domenico I can <laughs> hook some of these little questions up here for you <laughs> I think people are quite enjoying it I'm glad I'm glad you're enjoying enjoying the uh, the the ideas I saw yeah. you beat alone and I thought, oh, let me join and be together for once. Yeah, I'm always right. behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, see, they're spotting you, see. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's because the rest of my office is not spotted, so it's fine. <laughs> oh, you've got a very similar color scheme, though. Oh, God knows why. <laughs> I wonder who set my colors up in the background. <laughs> I wonder who did the setup in your office completely. <laughs> Uh, that's it. what Nana said. I'm a life path of 11. I wonder exactly what I've got for the rest of my life. Well, one and one makes two. So your num your life path would have been two. But 11 usually suggests a very um, fortunate type of life, really. I mean, it's a, one of those numbers that is considered as being a very um, positive, powerful number in numerology. Yeah. Oh, oh, they're glad to nice. glad they they're glad you're coming online for a change, Dominica. You're always in the background, you know. Yes, I know. And he's doing all the one hard work. monitoring everything. And modestly sits there. And uh 
does all sets the backgrounds up for me and set the you know all this all this you know glorious background and, and set up isn't my making Domenico's you know artistic eye has come in for that and the website yeah and the website too no we have guys got some amazing things coming up with the website soon um it'll be up within a month at least uh, under perhaps but we've got it's going to be um, under a month uh, yeah. patreon actually are going to have a preview before everybody else so patreon get ready because next week mm -hmm. you're going to receive the link and we'd like to hear your thoughts about the new website and if you can help us finding bugs problems stuff like that yeah. it will be really welcome but then and it's not like a normal website in many ways because we're using what we call artificial intelligence with it actually we're using we're using a new form of programming language that anticipates well we shouldn't, we shouldn't tell you too much but it anticipates what your interests are uh if you log into us and we'll serve you information that you might find interesting you know we're doing like Google do, but we're playing with our own game, really. Let's put it this way. Um, it's Your volume's going, to... Domenico. Oh, my, my volume yeah, is going right and the mic is going too. This yeah. mic is broken. I've noticed lately, in fact, I'm using the headphones for my meetings. Can you hear me better now? Yeah, yeah, you're fine now. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to speak straight into it to make it work, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, no. Um... The website is not the usual website you will see every day. But you will see when it comes out. It's a big surprise. It's a huge change, mm. that's for sure. It's going to look really good. And we're going to make a slight change to the way we do these shows, actually, as well. When we do the Jane and me, we're going to have um, a little sequence that me and Domenico are going to make where we go out and about. You know, a bit like Blue Peter used to be, where you're in the studio and then you go off and there's John Noakes or... Craig and Domenico doing something stupid. And then at the end of the show, we're going to have a little prediction section, right? So Ginger T's there asking, got any predictions? Um, I think Camilla Harris is going to leave soon, actually, out of the American um, vice president. She's going to move jobs. I actually have a prediction. And it's about the current political situation in the UK. Uh, Boris Johnson hater here. <laughs> He's not going to go. <laughs> no, you won't yet. The report won't show anything. <coughs> and the things are just going to get slowly faded away. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think they can get rid of him at the moment, actually. It's, he's, too, he's got too popular a, a base with the public, even though many, oh. many have turned against him as well. So he's a liability and a bonus at the benefit at the same time. I think he's the sort of guy that's going to hang on in there. I don't think he'll be kicked out right this week. And also, it's kind of convenient for him that we got this Ukraine crisis because nobody wants to change leaders when you're about to go to war in Europe. Um, so, um, and I, I do think the Russians will go in, but I think they're going to bide their time a bit. I don't think we'll see them go. They're all panicking at the moment. Um, but I feel that's going to, they're going to hold. I said that I thought they'd go in in November time. I thought they'd actually hold back and then suddenly make a strike. But they're not going to go away. Ojo has to go. <laughs> yes. There has been bad things done. There has been Prince Andrew. Oh, yeah, yeah. Been... You see, now I think Prince Andrew, uh, I do, do pray they get him because I think we do need to see justice done, actually. I, you, I, won't I see, think... you won't see it. Uh, we never see justice done. That's the last thing that's ever done in law. He will sign a plea or whichever way you call it, and he's going to be safe. He's prepared to go to trial. and He's either brave or stupid. Because the thing is, I think he's more likely to be stupid than brave, actually. Because when he did that television interview, he, he made a, such a hash of it. I mean, he was torn to pieces. You imagine him on a witness stand. Not that I think they'd ever call him to a witness stand. Um, I think this is a ploy, actually. I think he'll pull out. He'll pull out. Or something will happen, and they'll, they'll hold back, you know. I've often said he won't come to trial until after his mother's died. Who's Carmelita? They're talking about um, they're talking about the um, car, the, the vice president of um, America, aren't they? The, oh, you know, I, I, I think you spelled it wrong, Jason, haven't you? But um, it's I think she, I get the feeling she's going to go. 
or move or, or do something with her. Um, because she's a liability, I think, again. I don't think she's very popular. You need a woman in there, but not her. So maybe that's the prediction I was talking about earlier in the year. Though I thought of something about a Republican um, female. There's going to be some very interesting things in the coming month, actually, I think, regarding the politics in America. Uh, but that would be something to do, I think, on another time, really. Yeah, it seems that it's going to be interesting things happening in the world in general, not all in the UK or the US. It's Andrew's not the shaft, it's all in the shed, yeah. Yeah, it's, we're, we do, you've got to say, we do live in interesting times. Um, and uh, a lot of thoughts about Prince Andrew here. I think Prince Andrew and Royalty are, are thinking about their financial interests. Yeah, the, well, and the whole royal family thing has been a, a question of, you know, um, money, hasn't it, really, and power. Two things go together. I mean, why should any family in the world be given money, you know, just be given it? Madness. What's the meaning of to Let's change topic from a sad one to something a bit more. Yeah, it's one's innovation, two's more static number, but it's still a, it's still a number of um, um, kind of moving forward. It's balance, really. It's, it's um, decision making um, can be with the number two. You know, being able to see two sides of a of an argument and things. We're getting to quite. We're getting uh, yeah yeah i think she is a bit sketchy i mean i mean you, i i think the woman's once um uh, she wants to get um revenge and she'll keep it she'll keep going for it she's not someone if she wanted money she could have settled a long time ago um but no i think what well, she did originally but i think she's um she's she wants justice i think she genuinely wants to see um justice done Six six six. No, because We're losing your volume again, actually, oh, Dominican. Bloody mic is gone. See, you need to have someone like you need us. You need an office set up like me, where I got the right sound. You know, I've got a lovely little all, all mic'd off, so you don't get any any um feedback or anything like that. Mm. Yeah. Someone, I'll, I'll come around and give you a place. Of no, what what what. what now, what I need is a new mic, actually. The problem is that the one I want is around 380 quid. <laughs> yeah, we're getting too political. Yeah, we don't want to get too far into it. I think there we're, is rush, right. we're rushing with Ukraine. I can tell you, yes, that, that's going to happen. Yeah. Putin already yeah. said they're going to do it. Yeah, uh, I middle think Putin February, does actually. what Trump does what he says, doesn't he? And... Um, with already pouring arms into Ukraine. And Biden, what does he say? He goes, oh, well, if we'll let you invade, but if you invade, we're going to slap your wrist, you know. So go and invade, and then we'll slap your wrist economically, you know, which we tried to do with Crimea, and that didn't work. So, well, Putin's almost been given a green light there. So, And I think the problem is, what I've said in my predictions, is that what will happen is that Taiwan will also... You see, if everybody's testing America now, testing biden and so they tested trump you know and they didn't know where to go with him because he was a wild cannon he could have done all sorts of things biden you look at him and you think well if he lets us go into ukraine well we're going to go into um taiwan say the chinese and and south korea will start playing up and pakistan might decide to invade the north of um kashmir and all the rest of it i mean it, it once the um once the people let their guard down it's like a pack of dogs the world can be so goodness knows uh, what will happen. You know, um, I'm against certain political sides, but with Joe Biden, as if none John would have been instead of Joe Biden, things would have been much better. I can mm. tell you this. Yeah, yeah. I think he's. A, I think he's a mess. Unfortunately, it's like what would have happened if Halifax had been uh, elected instead of Churchill. We'd have had. We'd have probably all been speaking German now. You do need strong leaders in the world, otherwise, God, goodness knows what would have, would hap what would happen. Um, but I don't know if you heard, uh, there are communities in the states actually that they stop using money, like the U.S. dollars, and they went back to the exchange for services. 
So there are these communities where people are helping each other building the houses for free. If they want to buy fish, they're not paying with, with money. They're paying it with all the services or all the stuff. So it's more of an exchange. Yeah. Like back to the, um, to the exchange time. I, I, we've just been watching a, a series on TV, which is shown in America called, called Six Feet Under. Um, oh, yeah. We know some of the actors and actresses in it because we knew them when we were in, um, it, when we went to um, Hollywood that time. But I, I might put something up next week about that, actually. But um, hilarious because in that they were trading funeral services <laughs> for other services, like, you know, you are. Instead of paying your funeral bill, we'll rent you a room or we'll uh, let you have some uh, cannabis every week or whatever. <laughs> Brilliant little series, actually. It's an old one, but well worth it. But trade like that goes on anyway. And and really, the whole way the monetary system in the world works at the moment, I think, is quite frightening in many respects. Because if you took cash away, if we had a completely cashless society, the thing that would worry me most about that is what? If someone said uh, a government was in control that said, right, you can only use cash points within 30 miles of your home, it would mean you couldn't travel anywhere because you could not have cash. Therefore, you could not have access to any services whatsoever. Therefore, you could limit people's movement completely by only allowing cash to be drawn in certain areas. And that's just the tip of the iceberg, because in a cashless society, you've got no way round the system. And, um, and of course, there's be other things who whoever controls that. Um, and the same could happen even if we had this sort of utopian idea of everybody had a universal wage. You know, we still got to have that sort of we need that kind of black economy in a way. We need that. Um, not exactly. Project. Because uh, you are thinking about cashless society with banks controlling the cash and banks in contact with the government as they are today. But think about cashless society with the crypto environment, with the blockchain environment, where is not controlled by banks or governments, is controlled by the people. So you don't have a bank that tells the value, but it's the people that decide the value. Yeah. And if somebody will say, I'll, I'll shut down my server so you do not have access to your wallet. It won't work because the entire blockchain community has servers spread all around the world and you can create your own and you have control over your wallet. Like now, let's say you have your bank account and you control it through your phone, right? But with blockchain, your wallet, so your bank account between quotes is not on a server owned by a bank somewhere. God knows where. It's on your phone or on your computer or on a USB key. It's in your hand. Mm. So it's your, it's I, like, like the idea of, I like the idea of actually physically having something. I say this is mine, like a house. You know, your house is yours. Well, until the once the mortgage is off the thing. Yeah. But I mean, physically, that's what you know. Because money is just, it's just a promise, isn't it? It's just a promise to pay somebody. It's a promise to pay. Um, and uh, there's nothing now to, nowadays to back it up. I mean, all this cryptocurrencies and and all the um, the financial money in the world. In the past, Port Knox was there, and the rest of them, the Bank of England, had money, uh, had gold to back it up. Not enough gold to go around now. Of course, that's all been inflated, inflated years and years ago. And now it's just an illusionary system. And it, it makes me worry that one day, and it so could have happened almost overnight. The whole thing could just pop. You know, everybody owes everybody else who owes everybody else who owes everybody else um, without even needing to go into the detail of it. You can see that the thing is just a pack of cards. Um, and if it came down, of course, everything would collapse. The whole of society would just fall into into a hole. Yeah, but money is like money is like the IOU. That's not much of a difference. It is. It's all right. Yeah. Yeah. And to be fair, <sighs> cash in your hand, put it in this way, if you have a wallet with two thousand pounds in it and it's all the money you have, you feel safe to have it in your pocket because mm -hmm. it's on you. But if I come and steal it, then they're gone. You have no way of blocking them. 
you have no way of getting them back unless you find a thief. While with a credit card, for example, or a crypto card as they are coming out now, you can just immediately call the company and just block the card. You still yeah. have your money, nobody's touched them, and the person with the card can only use it to do nothing, just need to throw it in a bin. But I think when you think about it, our whole world is based on this idea of material things like that, isn't it? I mean, it's such a world of, could we ever envision a world without money? You know, could there ever be a a system without money? There could, couldn't there? There could be. Yes. We've assumed assumed always that we have to have money. And where there's money, there's always greed. And where there's, and there's, because money means greed. I mean, the corporate world is greed. The political world is power. Those two things dominate everything the ordinary person doesn't really want that they're the victims of greed they're the victims of power most of the time so i think we do have to try to think of a way of maybe having a world one day where there is no money and that's kind of means common ownership doesn't it it means you don't own things you don't own a house you rent it you have a temporary time or something you don't you know you don't even you don't own anything except perhaps the clothes you you wear i mean i don't know if that could could work at all well, put it in this way, in the old times, we didn't have money. We were helping each other. If the, the, the story about money, it's all a capitalistic thing. Buy, you own something, you're better than me that I don't own anything. That was the idea. And it's, well, it was to make, to, to split the people, to divide them, divide and conquer, as they used to say. But if you move away from that idea and you start to move into the idea of, hey, everybody has a house, everybody has food to leave. If you want to do more, you can get more. But if you're happy with what you have, then that's fine. Yes, you will have people that won't do anything. You will have lazy people that will just sleep till late and then play video games. But that's their choice. But you will have people that want to be doctors. You will have people that want to be builders. You will have people that want to be architects. You will have people that want to work in IT. But it won't become anymore something of, I must do it because I need a salary at the end of the month to pay for the bills. It will become more of a, I do it because I want to do it, because I like to do it, because it's always been my dream. For example, I have the feeling, I have, I'm I'm sure 100% out there, there was somebody that one day could have been a doctor that would have found the cure for cancer and for other illnesses, but that he never made to be a doctor because he was poor and he couldn't afford to pay for the university and the study. I think with all these things, in, I mean, I've often tried to think in myself, how could we ever have an ideal world, you know, a utopia, you know, and, and so many people, philosophers and people have always dreamed about the idea, could we ever have a perfect society? I mean, and all the great political thinkers have all really tried to do that. You know, Marx even was in his own time and in his own way, trying to find his version of what would be the perfect society based upon those values of that day. And similarly, you know, um, all of the, all of the great political thinkers have always and philosophers have always tried to find it but it always falls flat somehow because human nature is is such and i i actually don't think we could ever have a perfect society without first having something in, until we first have not a materialistic society like say marxism is but something that is based on spirituality first i mean i look at the, what was tibet before it was invaded by china which was the ultimate material force um, I wouldn't say it was a perfect society, but it was a society based that was very tranquil, based upon pure Buddhism, um, based upon the idea of religious, shared religious beliefs, but without becoming intolerant type of religious doctrine. And uh, they created a pretty good society. So I'm not saying religion should be at the heart of it, because religions are just as dangerous a force as politics. But we do need at the heart of our world spirituality, don't we? We need really an awakening of people in such a way that people genuinely one-to-one really do care Uh, and that is where it all falls down really because people are so bloody difficult most of the time but unless we get a spiritual awakening i don't think we can have a perfect society i think that's what the 60s did you see that everybody's minds opened all at once and then they shut down just as quick um but we do need a renaissance like that of some sort and that's where i feel 
the golden age comes, you know. You're gone silent. See, I've, I must have muted you, Dominica. Let's have a look what people are saying here while he's saying that. Just get a few. Of, he's going to have a have a go at fixing his mic. I want to shame that Dominico's mic is is messed up. I've had it when we've been doing our um uh, our programs at the studio. Of course, too, we had a mic problem. Sound is always the worst thing when it comes to doing broadcasts. It really is. And um, while he's getting connected, let me just remind you that all of this works when because of the patrons, those of you that help us out and organise um, us in the background here, some of you here um, supporting what we do. So. All right, can you, you can I bet you can hear me, but you cannot see me. Yeah, we can we can see we can hear we can hear you, but we can't see you. Yeah. So what I was saying is that you were there he's gone again. Mary, I love that comment there. Um, because this is one of the things that I've been very interested in, and as you know, I've been very interested in Sai Baba. Um, I believe he was not just a normal man, he was something beyond normal comprehension. And there are other beings like that in the world too. And and if you read things like Yogananda and you read the stories of the Siddha yogis and you read the stories of ancient times from all the countries of the world, there have been in our in our world very amazing people walk this earth, super people. And this is now? the superman. I think will come. This is the time, the dawning of the Superman. I think, as Nietzsche called it, but in a kind of a wrong way. Um, I think we will. I think you, yeah, we got you now. Yeah, I was saying. I think we will one day have a different order of humanity, a different type of human being walking this earth. I, I think, think that's what we have to do. We have to evolve to become something more than just the materialistic, greedy, power-hungry type of world type people we have today. And you the know. dominant forces needs to be spirituality and even higher consciousness in terms of telepathy and openness of um, and connections with people in, in a highly spiritual way that mankind has not even begun to understand in, in this day and age. You know when these will happen... It will be the moment that spirituality will be taken seriously. And by spirituality, I don't mean people believing in Buddha, God, or whatever they want to believe in. I, I mean for people that they will do things without expecting things in exchange. People that will do things without pointing, saying, well, I'm working. Why should I pay for that person that doesn't work? Mm -hmm. Because that's egoism. Yes, I think it now because... You see people that don't do anything, and you break your leg, you break your back. Yeah, for this a few is often a because. But I in just... a society where you have everything you need, so if you don't want to work, you do not have to work, and the work you do is because you really want to do it. It's not for the money; it's mm. for things you like. Like I like making photography, music, and this stuff, and I can just do that. <gasps> Well, I like IT and all these things. And you saw how much I'm into these things with your website. Yeah. Well, we do what we love, don't we? And and if you look at all the great, um, it, you know, up, we're up in Winchester, we're down back in our homes at the moment. We're up there in Winchester, beautiful Winchester Cathedral. We'll have to go and take some footage of it sometime, Dominica, for people. Beautiful. But that was built out of love, really. That was built because people wanted to do something spiritual like that i mean also you know, it's debatable what i'm saying there but all of the great uh, architecture of the world really it's more than money's built it it's been built by the dedication of the people that made that you know and italy there you know when you go around florence um, the the artists there you know they gave their lives to make those places great they they, they weren't really interested in the money the michelangelo's of this world and so on. they just loved what they did and that was just a few people. You imagine if we could get all the people of the world thinking more like that. If all of us were to think much more in terms, I want to do this because I want to see a beautiful world. You know, I don't care if I get paid or not. I don't want anything from it. I just want to do it, you know. And that should drive us all. I mean, I think it drives me and Jane a bit, actually, because, you know, we kind of feel inspired to want to do these things, even when we got a cold. You know, we want to do it, you know, because it's such a wonderful thing to do. And, you know, all the people that join us here, uh, you all, you guys all think the same. I know you do because of the messages we get from you sometimes. Um, we want to make the world a better place. And I think the only way we're ever going to do it is each of us one at a time, one after another. The, the world lights up one candle at a time. So. 
you know, we've still got a few sound problems there with Domenico. I keep going to flick on some of these things here and they disappear before I can get it. What's this one? I haven't read it even. All oh, right. Yeah, that's good. Oh, thanks, Brandy. I, did, I, I didn't even read that one. I just thought that looks an interesting one. Is it really the age of Aquarius? Yeah, I think it, I think it is. And I think the time are, as we move in from one age to another is always a difficult period. You know, I mean, the darkness before the dawn and all that. We've said it before, um, you know, but also isn't sometimes we're talking about work and things like that. You don't mind hard work, uh, but you don't like forced overtime. You see, this is the half, often the problem. Nobody, most people actually enjoy a bit of hard work. I think most people when they're nothing to do you get bored you get lazy you get fat you get tired you get ill um activity is natural to us but the kind of the world we've got you know it, it's a bit more it's like you have to do something if anybody tells me great you have to do this i won't budge an inch but if i want to do something i'll give 100 percent and more and i think most people are a bit like that aren't you you know can you hear me now yeah can hear you demi go Okay, let's see if the headphones will work better. Yeah. So yeah, now if you think about it, look at me working on your website. You didn't ask me to do it. I just started working. You did it, it you, because I'm such a lovely person. <laughs> no, it was a surprise actually. <laughs> and it should have been just an experiment on learning about the new programming language I was studying. And then he started to build up the curiosity. And sometimes, as you saw from some messages I've sent you, I've been working till three o'clock in the night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was, I wanted to do it. You weren't forcing me to do it. You weren't pushing me to do it. You didn't give me that line and say, oh, by this day, it needs to be completed. It was just something I wanted to do. And it felt so interesting developing it that I ended up working till late and not even noticing it was late. That's, that's, the, that's the way it goes. And I mean, when I first discovered the internet, um, it was the days of CompuServe and things like 1996 or eight or something like that, some silly time <coughs> when it was a, a wow thing and nobody had heard of it. I mean, you get so fascinated by it and start building websites and try, I got an, you know, I've got an animated GIF. I made an animated GIF. I made an animated GIF. You know, it moves, it moves, you know. I mean, it was so, it was such breakthroughs. And I'm sure a lot of guys, people out there have, have had the same feeling. When, when you, when you love doing something, you will put vast amounts of work into it because you love it. Don't you? Oh, art is like that, surely. Music is like that. Um, and, and, Building Craig's website view was was like that too, which is um, it's good. Is my dad used was a teacher, and he said when you're at school you don't need to teach kids. That's the problem with teachers. They go out there and they teach. What's wrong with them? He used to say, you've got to go out there. All you have to do is inspire, and they'll do the rest. You know, and I think that's what teaching and and a large part is about. You if you inspire people. If people can be inspired, they can do incredible things and can do things that are far beyond whatever they kind of their expectations of themselves. You know, we need people out there who can inspire the world. You think of all the political leaders, all the leaders of business, all of them. None of them inspire. You know, even the religious leaders don't inspire. They, they're they just inspired by their ego. And I think exactly. the only way is, is if a person is genuinely genuinely lifted by the spirit as it were lifted by the exhilaration of existence and life um you can then you can make people can do incredible do incredible things and that's what all of us here should be doing i know everybody that comes on this is all interested in this type of topic all we have to do is inspire the people around us that's how we change the world each one of us just inspires it's, inspires inspires it, it's lead by example as I'm doing now with my team. It's by me as a leader doing things first and doing them with the team, not just telling them that's what you have to do. I'm expecting results from you and that's it. Yeah. But about the time flying because you're doing something you were interested in. The best example is when we went to pick up Nanjo from a house. It was yeah, what, three and a half hours. 
You must watch Three and a half the, hours those who don't know Nanny Joan is that's Jane's mum. And you must have a look on the site for the manifesto of Nanny Joan. We did we did a chat with Nanny Joan and, and got her views on the world. She's 93, I think. <laughs> have a look on some of it. Sorry, go on. When we went and got Nanny Joan, yeah. Yeah, the three and a half hour strip, how long was for us? It was like 10 minutes. It yeah. felt like 10 minutes. It is, yeah, yeah. And it's we the same, them... isn't it? You're having fun, time. And I think life is like that, actually. Wouldn't it be if your whole life was like that? You know, if it was just a joy, it would be like it would like it would be like forever and 10 minutes, you know, because I, I think, think. I think if people who start to, well, they can't now because we live in this society where you need to work for money. But if we would be in a society where you work, what you love to do, what you work for, what you love to do because you love to do it, I think we will get even to that point where people won't think about, oh, why should this lazy person get a house and food if I'm working? Because it's not going to be that anymore. It's going to be, well, we got the same. The only thing is that I'm doing something more with my free time. It's going to be more yeah. like taken as a hobby rather than a forceful thing. Mary's got, talks about their side, Barbara, education and human values. I mean, one of the things we get wrong with the values I think we have in, in the world is everything we do is based upon reward, isn't it? We're after the carrot and avoiding the stick. You know, it's all about that. We're driving on a very low, low level. But this is this idea that comes up in, in East and West is the idea of service. You do things just for the act of service. You do things just for the act of love, as it were. It's art for art's sake you do it because art you do art because art is beautiful there's no reason you do it it's just it's beautiful to be creative you know and i think if we if we could get more into a, a level like that and perhaps when up perhaps with with the industrial age will eventually take away some of the dreary jobs that we've had to do i mean i, I wouldn't like to spend my life um tilling the fields in medieval times and, and, and turn it for tea every night you know and we're very very spoiled and lucky in this world what we've got but the problem is we don't use our resources wisely we've got the we've got each of us have got the riches of kings and queens from the past and yet we all we want is more 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 material rubbish and we the, dive our minds into facebook and tv and endless drool coming out of the television sets and so forth when really we should be learning to develop and become awake human beings that's why we're here on this earth and society definitely does not take any of that into account, does it? It doesn't take into account anything about why we're here. There's, it's the whole, the whole rampant materialism of the world is all about, you know, that this world has no purpose, no meaning. It's just a mechanical universe that is run by evolution uh, for some fluke of nature that's come and it will go and, not, and there's no purpose or meaning. But because modern man and woman has lost the meaning is in search is really they're in search of a soul, but they've lost it until we can find that sense of purpose and meaning. We won't get people driven by these ideas of of love and service and doing things for their own sake and the joy of creativity, which also, I think, comes out in work. But Do you think goes, I think that goes even with the education. The education system, I, I grew up with a mom that was a teacher. She was a teacher. She became a head teacher when I left. But I grew up with a pretty strong teacher. But she wasn't like, you need to study from page 9 to page 10. Just remember every single word written in these pages. She was more like, if you want to read more, just go on. Don't stop at what the teacher told you to study. She was more like, when I was asking her, for example, oh, what does this word mean? She was like, take the vocabulary, find it, learn about it, search every day. When you, are, when you find something you don't know about, do not just stop on I don't know, and do not just stop on the first explanation you found about it. Just keep searching. Learn what you're around. So she was inspiring me not to just accept what i've been taught but to understand it mm. we don't have today teachers that are like these a lot of no. people are just like you have to learn and that's it <coughs> why well um, i don't know why 
the 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 class has to end by this time of the year and that's what you need to know so you see it's all driven again by results isn't it we've got to get you know you've got to get so many exam results otherwise the school gets in trouble and this is all over the world this has been happening and we've been ended up with tick box um tick box sort of um research you know they seem to think do something research you don't to do a piece of research you have to do hands-on research say for example in science then you have to get your peers to review it you know you have to then test it and test it and test it see if it works and if it's right and then if it's correct then that becomes a piece of knowledge nowadays people's research is we google something in we google something if it agrees with what i say and ah. i stop there yep I'm back. He's, yeah. he's back. So I, I got censored there. I thought I was going to be the one got. So, no, it, it's like this um, confirmation, confirmation ideas. You know, you're confirming. And it's gone again. And we've gone again. We've definitely... And you're back again. I'm back again. Perhaps the camera's been overheating. But... Probably we need the fun in that office. And you're gone again. Hello, Papa. <laughs> I think it's going to be hello, but no. I think it's going to be an hello goodbye now. I think I think we have it. I think it's time for the end of the show, don't you, Domenico? Yeah, I think so. We're but... coming to the end. It's, we're at, here we are at eight o'clock. Yeah, it's been an hour. It's been an interesting hour. Thank you, Craig. We can I'm, need you. I'm back. I'll put a funny face. <laughs> <laughs> No, it didn't freeze. Okay. No, we Thanks can. We can use everyone. It. We're going to finish the show now before the camera packs in or the sound packs in. I told you we had a few technical difficulties tonight, but thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time, eh? And don't forget, if you do enjoy it, don't forget to become a patron because if you become a patron, uh, it helps us to keep this going and buy ourselves some new microphones and a fan for this office to make sure the camera works. <laughs> and we've also been doing some doing some stuff in India too recently this week. Um, people are being fed at this moment and so uh and that's coming out of my money not out of the patrons but all of the work we all do you know helps helps the world at large okay thanks for joining us folks we'll see you soon bye for now you ready bye for now <laughs> i stole your line <laughs> I, uh, who's gonna click the video for the end hang on brands i'm going i'm going would you like to know more about the paranormal world Craig Hamilton Parker's books are now available on Amazon. Explore the future. Discover what happens after death. Unlock the secrets of your dreams. Learn to develop your own psychic skills.